Okay, this is the series that we're looking at suggestions that may help enhance your lab report. Uh, again, you do not, repeat, do not need to do all of these things and probably likely should do more. Uh, these are things I just thought of, you know, not randomly, but, uh, you know, there are other things that you could certainly put in and, and many things that I left out. Uh, you could leave some of these things out and still do an excellent job. But um, there are things you probably should look at and consider when writing your laboratory report. Um, so this one is for 2.1. So this is all of the glucose, cholesterol, and protein measurement ones. Uh, there are separate videos for the other ones you would write your lab report on, which would be uh, 8.4, which is the acid-base balance ones, and then 1.3, which are the homeostasis negative feedback ones. So uh, just, again, this is not an exclusive list. It's only some of the things that you might want to look at. Uh, so a couple things in general. Double-check JLR13. That's the one that's the checklist. So as you get ready to turn in your report, make sure you've covered all of the points in that one. Uh, look at the common errors and make sure you have avoided them. So don't, don't do that. I've had a couple students uh, that typically, uh, you know, make uh, some of those common errors again and again and again. So just try to make sure that's not you. Um, other things you should consider if you're doing any of 2.1 is talking about Beer's Law a little bit and how it works and how we measured uh, the different substances in lab. We measured them all the same way. We just used a different standard um, and a different reagent. Uh, so, you know, make sure you understand that. Uh, whatever substance you picked, make sure you talk about the normal concentrations and normal ranges, what we see there. Um, you should probably talk about the sources of whatever you pick. So where do we get glucose or cholesterol or protein from? Uh, you should always make sure you talk about the normal substance uh, in the body and how it's used. So what do we need glucose or cholesterol or protein for? Um, and then make sure you cover both ends of the spectrum. What happens if there's low levels, right? So if you have excessively low levels of, of one of those substances, what's going to happen? And also if you have excessively high levels. Don't just concentrate on one. You probably should do both ends. So let's kind of look at, um, and they're not going to be much different. Um, obviously, they're different substances, so they'll have different things. We'll look at each one a little bit individually. We'll see a lot of the same ideas, although specifically uh, each one will be slightly different. All right, so let's start with glucose. Now, glucose is covered in FOX 2.1a. So obviously you want to look at the background in FOX 2.1a. Uh, we did a whole laboratory in glucose. I think that's why this one tends to be a little easier for students because it's something they understand. So lab 19 is the glucose tolerance test. So you should make sure you understand that, um, how we did it. And a lot of that information probably directly apply to this. Uh, in addition, section one, part two, the chemistry, especially the biomolecules, talking about glucose and things like that would probably help here as well. Um, other things that you should mention, what's the normal range of glucose? So uh, whoever you use, whether it's Fox or something off the internet, um, most sources will say 60 to 99 or 70 to 99. Uh, either one is correct. And as long as you cite the reference, uh, couldn't argue with you. Uh, what's the normal function of glucose? Why do we have glucose in our body in the first place? and what it does. Uh, what are the sources of glucose? We have both endogenous and exogenous sources. Endogenous means from inside, exogenous means from the outside. So, you know, a lot of students ignore the endogenous portion. Uh, gluconeogenesis, right? We talked about that in metabolism is a great, great example of that. Exogenous is the most obvious one when you're eating sugar. Uh, you should mention the effects of hyperglycemia, what happens if your blood sugar is high, and hypoglycemia, what happens if your blood sugar is low. To a large extent, we measure glucose to diagnose diabetes, so you probably should talk about that, certainly. Um, you should uh, talk about the complications of diabetes, uh, what happens if you have it, and what are the symptoms 
Uh, again, going back to lab 19, we had a lot of those. Let's talk about the different types of diabetes. There's more than just type 1 and type 2. Uh, you probably should mention gestational diabetes and perhaps even the emerging diabetes. Uh, you should talk about, yeah, we do uh, glucose tolerance tests or, or fasting glucose levels to check um, for the various levels. You could even uh, mention a test called A1C, that's sort of like the average glucose over time. So you could mention that test as well. Um, but uh, you should talk about other sources of high blood sugar. So if your blood sugar is high and you don't have diabetes, what are the other complications like liver disease? things like that. When you uh, present your uh, information in terms of your results, uh, you should consider at least using at least one single table or figure. Um, and that's going to show the glucose levels for the unknown, normal, and abnormal blood. So remember we measured three things in lab, the normal, uh, the abnormal, and then the unknown. That was from our student uh, volunteer. Um, and also along with the appropriate determination. So, um, you know, make a table, right? So it'd be rows and columns of stuff. So it looks something like this. I guess I could have made it neater. And then in this last column, uh, give the designation. So, uh, you know, you'll have the unknown and, you know, if you wanted to put in the absorbance reading, you could. And if you wanted to put in, you know, let's say they were, you know, 81, for their blood glucose concentration and that would be considered normal so you'd write in normal here and then um, i think if you're using the sample data um, it comes out to like what is it 270 i think right so if they were 270 right then you would write diabetic for that person in that column so that's one way to look at it and do it and see if that's um, in the normal range. So um, that's uh, what we do for the glucose. Okay, so now we'll take a look at the cholesterol. And cholesterol is going to be similar. Um, we've kind of talked a lot about it already. We'll just be specific to cholesterol. So the FOX uh, 2.1b is where we have cholesterol, I believe. Um, so check out the lecture, section one, part two, chemistry. Again, that's the biomolecules. We talked a little bit about cholesterol. Um, there's some stuff in your notes as well. Uh, you should talk about the normal range for cholesterol, whether you use FOX or, again, a hospital or a blood test that you have, cite it. Uh, why do we normally use cholesterol for? So it's important for a number of reasons. Um, it's so important we make it inside our body, so that's the endogenous production. Uh, we also get it from uh, what we eat in terms of animal materials. Uh, what happens if your cholesterol gets high? That's called hypercholesteremia. What's the effects of that? If it gets low, hypocholesteremia. Um, as an aside, there's very few articles or inf very little information out there about low cholesterol and its dangers. It doesn't seem to be a big problem. Um, like pretty much everything else uh, has an issue if it's too high or too low, but cholesterol doesn't seem to be a huge problem. Um, uh, one of the things you probably should connect it to would be heart disease and the effect of cholesterol. Um, maybe looking at LDLs uh, versus HDLs, right? That might uh, help determine some stuff. Um, so uh, LDL and L HDL and how they're different and how they go into total cholesterol and which one's good for you and which one's bad for you. Um, you should talk about any other cardiovascular issues associated with high cholesterol um, you know not just heart disease but maybe you know vascular disease like you know strokes and things like that uh, again uh, are there any effects of low cholesterol we don't see it much um, and so there doesn't seem a whole lot of information on it um, and then also uh, like we saw you know for the glucose one and go back and look at it if you didn't if you skipped it um, you probably want a table or figure that shows the cholesterol levels for the unknown, normal, and abnormal blood, um, along with the, the appropriate, der, appropriate determination of status. So the appropriate determination of status, meaning they have normal cholesterol, high cholesterol, low cholesterol. 
Um, so that would not be a bad way to, to go and look at that. And finally, we'll look at protein. That's in Fox 2.1C. So obviously check out Fox 2.1C for the background. Um, the lecture, uh, S1P2 chemistry, again, when we talk about proteins as a biomolecule. In addition, lecture S3P1, the blood lecture, also will mention some of the important uh, proteins, especially in the blood. So that's going to help right here uh, when we get to that bullet, uh, how it helps. Um, uh, should have changed this to protein, not cholesterol. All right, so we should know the normal range of protein. I cut and pasted it from cholesterol, forgot to change it. Um, so when you do that, uh, we should know the normal function of protein. So how does it used in the body and what do we use it for? Um, you should know the sources of protein, which tend to be dietary. Uh, what happens if you have high protein, hyperproteinemia? What happens if you have low protein, right? Hypoproteinemia um, and what uh, protein deficiency problems are. Uh, what's the effect of excessive protein, especially on the kidneys? Uh, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, what's the key proteins in the blood? Um, how, uh, especially how albumins play a role in the osmotic regulation of blood and swelling and edema, things like that. And like I said for the other ones, and again, we'll go back and look at the glucose one. Uh, consider using a single table or figure to show the protein levels. And then... Uh, add a, another column that talks about the what we call the uh, determination of status. So whether it's normal, high, or low uh, in that table. So that's what we're going to look at in terms of these. And hopefully this has been helpful in, for you to be able to figure out what types of things uh, you would include on your lab report.